Welcome to Arkham Corner. I will be comparing Pathfinder 2nd Edition with D&D 5th Edition and the differences here. And why I think Pathfinder works for me and may not work for you. Um, and I will point out some things of difference in terms of perhaps what's better, worse, etc., etc. First of all, <clears throat> I want to jump to creating um, modules or creating homebrews um, and the already made modules for each. Uh, I want to point this up first because I think it's important. Um, so Pathfinder 2nd Edition has a denture pass. These are campaigns that um, can carry out for a period of months, um, depending on obviously how many times a week you play. D&D has modules, which are also campaigns. Both have short adventures, long adventures. D&D uh, has um, one shots. Uh, around that they are mainly uh, from creators that have made one shots that are basically you can finish in a day um, so for one of those weekends where you gather your group together and you want to kind of go through a, a short adventure that takes maybe even a couple hours to have that Pathfinder kind of has that with short adventures uh, but they're kind of like a one to two session um, depending on um, how long you, you your sessions last I mean you can finish one of them in a, in a two week a two day weekend stint as it were um, they're a little longer than the one shots that I've found in 5e the long campaign adventures in both they're the ones that that takes some time. Now, going back to homebrew, homebrewing in Pathfinder 2nd Edition is a lot easier than doing it for D&D 5e. It's not necessarily the story, it's the combat. And this is what separates the two of them the most. The combat in Pathfinder 2e is better than 5e where 5e if you want simplistic just get to it type of combat 5e has that okay whereas um pathfinder 2e gives players more options in combat um to do stuff okay 5e is simplistic, Pathfinder 2e is, I wouldn't say more complex, but gives you more to do. And I, from a tactical standpoint, Pathfinder 2nd Edition is better than D&D 5th Edition. Now, if you want <clears throat> the simplest um, bare bones combat 5e will have what you're looking for um, now the differences in combat I'm not going to go through all of it because there are lots of videos that go through this <clears throat> Pathfinder 2nd edition has a 3 action autonomy now those three actions um, depends on what you do. So some spells can cost you two of those actions. Some spells cost one. <clears throat> and attacks uh, cost you one action of three. Or if you're doing a special bit, it can maybe cost you two to three. <clears throat> spells, they cost you actions. And so, um, it really depends on what uh, your character wants to do, but it gives you options where the three-action economy in Pathfinder 2e 
you can do whatever you want pretty much to <clears throat> during your combat turn um they also have reactions much like uh D &D 5e has reactions they work the same pretty much now <sighs> The action economy in D&D 5e is kind of different. They have your action, your bonus action, your reaction. You can kind of do what you want in 5e's 3 action economy, but it's not as expansive as Pathfinder 2e. <clears throat> so... Um, where that ties into what I'm talking about about uh, modules and creating your own homebrews is monsters in combat so when you're making your world in homebrew you, you have to really pay attention to um, your combat setups your encounters and monsters uh, in 5e very closely because of the power creep that players can get uh, through their leveling up depending on how far or how many how if you're going if you're making a campaign from levels 1 to 20 you really have to pay attention to the combat in that because honestly the monsters in D&D &D 5e suck uh, there are the ones the occasional ones that pop out that are interesting uh, but all in all the power creep is terrible for 5e and that's why i prefer pathfinder second edition because the monsters suck for the most part whereas pathfinder second edition the monsters are unique and uh offer much challenge in any level and you can have epic kind of homebrew campaigns that you can make in pathfinder second edition that's the biggest issue with 5e is the power creep okay <clears throat> both have ac in combat so that doesn't change however in pathfinder second edition the ac goes up when people level up whereas 5e it stays stagnant all the way through the reason being is that the monsters go up in pathfinder second edition to um, keep level with the PCs, whereas 5e it does not. Now there are monsters in D&D in &D 5e, such as the Tarask, as an example, that can challenge players to an extent, but if you have a power creep that's very terrible and designed the way 5e does it, um, the balance is off. Okay. That it never used to be that way with D and D. It used to be balanced. Uh, I think a lot of people's choice of versions or editions with D and D five E or D and D in general would be three point five, which is kind of where Pathfinder first edition sprung up. So, um, I think I'll talk about the action economy first. So here is kind of a uh, picture of the D and Five E with their action economy. I'll just briefly put it up here. You can read it. Uh, so this is pretty much like the your action, your bonus action, and of course there's a reaction. Okay. <clears throat> they give you a list of what you can do. So, as you can see, you can attack, you can cast a spell, you can dash, you know, um, movement. Now, here's one thing that's, that's very different from the action economy to 5e against Pathfinder is that movement in um, 5e is free. So you can move your full movement. You can move 
attack and use up the rest of that movement. So let's say you have a character that has 30 movement. They take 15 uh, of that 30 movement, move to an enemy, attack it, move away with the rest of their movement, which is 15 equaling 30 uh, speed, it would be called. Whereas Pathfinder 2e, your actions, your movement, it costs you an action. But you, the difference is, of the three actions you can do, <clears throat> full movement, up to your full movement, attack an enemy, then you can take your last action by using full movement to get away. Because not every enemy has opportunity of attack. Whereas in 5e, opportunity attack is a constant thing. Meaning that you have to disengage from an enemy without being hit. Which is weird in Pathfinder 2e for me because I, pl I played 5e or GM'd uh, 5e for five years <clears throat> up until I switched over to 2e. And it's still weird to me where, like, players can move in and out freely against a monster without being hit because there's only certain monsters that have opportunity attack. So, <clears throat> in that sense, I think um, opportunity attack in 5e for most enemies and most creatures works because they would you know, attack somebody trying to get out of their attack range. So that's one thing I have to say with 5e, that the opportunity attack thing is a little better in 5e. Whereas in uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, not every monster, and it's rare that they get an opportunity attack for, you know, PCs. Um, <clears throat> going over to uh, Pathfinder... As you can see, there's a lot of information here. But here is your um, action economy in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So, and as you can see here, it lists kind of like stuff. Now, there are spells that will cost two, maybe three of your three actions, um, which lists in your combat sheet. Or your character sheet, not a combat sheet. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so, the difference really is more options for your action economy pathfinder. And I wouldn't say limited 5e, but uh, kind of is with 5e's action economy of an action, bonus action, reaction. Um, <clears throat> so, comparing the, the two of them, 2e wins. Okay? <clears throat> um, this is uh, also works with monsters. So, monsters in 5e <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they have actions and reactions some of them so going to our thing here <clears throat> looking at the animated armor um, this is where the difference here is in the pathfinders monsters being way better than 5e Although in 5e, you can find some books out there that have sort of unique monsters to help you with the power creep a little bit in your game. But they're homebrewed, not from the books. So as you can see here, there's an armor class. You got hit points, you got speed, you got strength, dex, con, and all this stuff here. You got immunities, condition immunities. <clears throat> special abilities and then their actions meaning their attacks and then almost over 90 percent of 
5B monsters in the books have a slam or a claw or a punch. That's it. That one or the other, and they don't really have anything else. <laughs> They're bare bones. They don't have really anything that's unique about them. I mean, other than a little bit of, of, of their abilities. <clears> or <throat> here, you have a per, um, your perception, the languages, the skills, which is kind of like their, um, you know, specifics. You have your AC, your saves. That's the other thing, too, with um, between uh, Pathfinder 2nd Edition and the d, &D 5e. The saving throws, they're kind of the same, although Pathfinder has strictly three for specific ones. Five E has con, charisma, strength, <clears throat> dex. Um, <clears throat> so in a way they have a little bit more depending on the scenario. So saving throws are the same either game. Uh, so there's not really anything that stands out there. Um, <clears throat> this monster of course has their HP. They, they have a weakness. They, here's their immunities. Here's their special effect, which is actually a trigger right here. Um, then they have their movement speed, their attacks. So this one has a claw. It has a ranged. <clears throat> it has uh, ability. It has a couple of uh, action abilities. So this is what separates the, the monsters from 5e is that a lot of the monsters have action abilities that they can do during their turn. And it makes them very unique in their own style of, of how they attack players. Whereas 5e, most of the monsters, I'm telling you honestly, have that's their template. With a couple of abilities here that are ongoing perhaps <clears throat> and then they have like one attack two attacks but they don't there's no uniques there are a few unique ones in 5e but not enough and um in terms of levels 5e has their cr system which is a complete mess and it's convoluted honestly Whereas Pathfinder 2nd Edition has levels. Back to the old school ways of, of um, uh, how to differentiate monsters and their strength. So <clears throat> they go from level 0 to level 30. Whereas in 5e, they go up from uh, level 1 to level 20. But even in the bracket of... Um, um, their CR uh, really uh, you're you have to do a lot of math to when you're making <clears throat> your monster encounters as in 5e <clears throat> level 1 to level 3 it can be easy to where the PCs just bowl over all the the monsters to TPK once the PCs in 5e reach like level 4, 5, and up, they'll bowl over a majority of the monsters that, uh, unless you're crazy and you put in like a level 20 against level 5 <laughs> PCs, well, uh, even then the PCs won't win. Uh, but the power creep is so crazy in 5e that like the majority of those monsters just, some of them won't even get in attacks because... 
<clears throat> the insurance bonuses, the combat bonuses, the health bonuses. <clears throat> the health goes up um, in 5e. Relatively there, you, I mean, players can roll for the have their health per level or they can get straight up what their class is. Um, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the health boost for leveling up is more. And uh, their AC goes up. And that's a huge thing. AC doesn't change in 5e. <clears throat> Where are the players? It just remains um, the same. There are skills and abilities that can boost um, AC for the in certain classes for them, but in general, their AC does not go up. It remains the same. Uh, now, there are items, of course, that can be found to kind of help with that. Um, but still, the power creep difference in the 5e is player side, uh, and then in Pathfinder in 2nd edition, it remains balanced all the way through between monsters and PCs. <coughs> so, <coughs> pardon me, I'm choking here. <laughs> now, let's go back <coughs> here. Uh, hearing me drink my water, <clears throat> trying to not choke. Um, so, as you can see with the comparison here, there are, are major differences between both systems. And, and um, people that are have played D&D uh, &D for a long time, coming over to Pathfinder will, will probably get pissed off with certain elements of, of simplicity. Uh, Pathfinder is far from simple to, I wouldn't say um, impossible for newbies to jump into, but if you've been, if they've been playing D&D for a long time um, and like the simplicity of D&D, &D, they won't care for the Pathfinder 2nd Edition, honestly, because that's what D&D &D is. D&D is, is more kind of open to newbies to tabletop gaming and the simplicity of it gets people to play it so um, there's a difference there where 5e has an advantage I suppose because it's simple the, there's not really anything to it to really dive into a game with D&D where Pathfinder 2nd Edition has few complexities to get into <clears throat> now here's another topic here between the two of them death of care of player characters and the way it's handled um, Pathfinder second edition has what's called um, dying and wounded okay so when you, your player character goes down they get a condition called dying one. Okay. There are four levels of dying. And if that player reaches dying four, they're dead, dead, and that's it. There's no coming back. And it makes combat quite intense because you can't just heal the player back up and that they can continue fighting. When a player gets up from being knocked down and unconscious, they go from dying one to wounded one. Now, if a wounded one player character goes down again in the same combat, they get dying two. So you take that wounded one, add it to the dying track. So one plus one is two, so they're dying two. And if monsters hit that player while they're down, they get another dying. And then you can see where I'm going with this. So even if that player character gets up from their combat, they will have be, be wounded, which means that they'll have to rest and get the heck out of there. Um, and if they reach wounded four, it's bad news. So they have levels of kind of um, to keep the combat very intense and dangerous for certain, obviously, certain situations. Like even 
a horde of skeletons for a level, let's say, 10 character can be dangerous. It's not just, you know, oh, I go up and go down. By me, D&D is that way. So 5e, when a character goes down, they do have what they call death saves, where if you roll a certain number, you have three uh, death saves that the character has to roll if they haven't been healed by a certain time, which is not likely. But they have three saves, so if they get three successes, they're back up. <clears throat> if they get three failures, they're dead, dead. If they um, take double damage than what their original HP is, they're dead, dead. I mean, you're going to have, like, a level 1 going up against a level 10 construct, and that construct's going to double damage to kill the player. Obviously, that will kill, kill the player. And it has happened. But because of the long rest, short rest, healing, all kinds in D&D, Player death does not happen often, if at all, and um, the the just again going into the power creep of characters with D and D is pretty much like players are gods by a certain level, and death is not doesn't happen unless the GM really puts in like a makes up their own monster or um, puts players against higher double leveled monsters against the single level player characters <laughs> um if they want to be really jerky about it um and that's the biggest difference with this with, with death death is a possibility in Pathfinder second edition every single session especially when you're dealing with combat where it's 5e meh Maybe. So the intensity of combat in Pathfinder is way better than D&D 5e. If you want to play as a, as a hero and a, a god hero, 5e is where you pretty much have that. So I think I've pretty much covered a, the major points between the two of them. Um, and that's primarily why I like Pathfinder 2nd Edition, because of the intensity in combat, and the, um, campaigns are better, better, they're written better, they're balanced better, I mean, you're gonna have certain parts where players go, where like, oh, crap, there's a, something here that we, we shouldn't be fighting, you're gonna have that, whereas the modules I found in D&D &D 5e, Minus a few just are not structured properly. They just feel like they're point A to point B kind of mundane track for their modules. Like, it's a shame because the lore they used to have in D&D going back in editions used to be fantastic and they used to have great you know conversations about certain characters and certain uh areas in their world and stuff like that whereas pathfinder second edition they have this huge world um i can't pronounce the name of the the where this all of them take place it's, it's you can look it up but they're kind of connected all the adventures in this big giant world and different periods of time or different areas and stuff like that because they even say there's like adventure paths like you have um single adventures that connect to bigger adventures which is really cool like um <clears throat> plague stone connects with um a long campaign called uh, agents of edge watch so you can connect both of those which is really cool because you can have like a, a one shot kind of introduction with your agents going into the Agents of Edgewatch big campaign <clears throat> as an example and um, 
that's great. And you can take even um, Pathfinder first edition adventure paths and you can convert them into second edition, which isn't that too bad because the monsters connect uh, pretty much. Uh, the story remains the same. You don't have to change any of that. <clears throat> Whereas modules in D&D &D 5e, um, mundane, oh, like I said, with a few exceptions, because there's a few camp uh, modules that work for the most part. Um, like for me, it was Water Deep Dragon Heist, um, Icewind Dale, um, uh, Into the Abyss. I think it's called Into the Abyss. I could be wrong. But even that, like, it had it, the, the story fell apart in the end, but to the start, it was pretty good. Um, so, the, the main other ones, like, <clears throat> um, Strahd and Tomb of Annihilation, like, in concept, those stories were there, but the execution didn't finish. So the modules I find in D&D &D 5e, they, they kind of, most of them start off, you know, okay, and then they just jumble, especially with the power creep, which I keep referring to, I know, but it's the biggest problem with D&D &D 5e, where there's no challenge. If you take the Strahd campaign in D&D &D 5e now, players can bowl through that campaign unless the GM changes the encounters, um, changes things up, which the modules, in essence, you, you, the GMs kind of have to because they're not, there's no, there's not good flow within the modules where in the adventure paths and the long campaigns and stuff, are structured in a way where they're balanced all the way through and the flow is a lot better. The books are set up better. The, the, I just find that, okay? Now, again, if you want simplicity, if you want your hero to be a god and barely ever die, d and is the way to go. If you're um, first foyer into the tabletop experience and you never played before the simplicity of uh D, D probably it'll hook you in if you want challenge you want tactical combat if you want um kind of better overall wor world scope and more pathfinder is where it's at not that there's not dead lore in D, &D they some of it's still there Pathfinder has more. Um, I will say that Pathfinder 2nd Edition is probably, honestly, not for newbies. Uh, but it just has more options for um, character creation, which is the final thing I'll talk about and then I'll stop rambling and get off this video. <laughs> Pathfinder character creation has more options, giving you more combinations that you can do than you've ever dreamed of with your characters. And there's a lot of, of classes and new ones coming out with their new books all the time. They have at least, um, once a year they have a new book, like rule book. They're coming out with a new one, I think, in a month or so, with a new uh, long campaign. Which I think uh, is, uh, I think they said it's going to be four books. <clears throat> um, and they release long campaigns in one to six books every month. So they always constantly have content coming out the butt. So you're going to have a lot of content. Where D&D &D, sadly does not. They have a new book maybe every couple months maybe if that like I've noticed that too with their the, over the last year and a bit maybe two books three books and their campaigns are 
long periods of time before they release the modules, uh, if at all. Very slow. Very slow. And they charge a lot. So, um, yes, character creation is definitely way better. Uh, 5e, I find character creation in 5e limited because when you level up, you get forced to get this uh, feat. Um, you can multi-class where you have choices of that, but you're still limited to what your character can be and take because they pretty much like power creep those abilities and it's like that's what most players use when they defeat their enemies whereas in Pathfinder you can have a gunslinger that casts magic you can have a, a champion aka paladin that is able to do more than just heal or or attack things i mean it's a lot it's endless really so anyway that is my um video on the comparisons with these two take what it, with it whatever you want um i'm not here to bash dd um I don't like certain aspects of it, but I have to say that for simplicity players, it's perfect for them, for the simplistic play of it. You, you can get a book, get a campaign together, and, and just go at it and be a, god, be a god player if you want. Whereas Pathfinder is more of a tactical, uh, again, I'm not saying complex system, but has more meat to it. So those are the comparisons with these two. Anyway, that's uh, going to be my, it for my video.